This is the devastating aftermath of a typical tropical cyclone. Northern Australia faces an average annual damage bill from cyclones of $600 million. So how can we better protect homes from these terrifying events? Answers to this critical question are the focus of James Cook University's cyclone testing station in Townsville. Here, under the supervision of Director David Henderson, materials and structures are tested to breaking point. So what we're looking at is simulating the dynamic fluctuating loads that occur on our building products, whether it be roof cladding in this case, it could be walling or a door or windows. Basically the test piece forms the lid of the air box. So we have two large fans that push air into this chamber. We have a computer controlled valve down the other end that gives us this cyclic load. They're trying to basically pull the roof off our house. This test simulates the power of cyclone-driven debris. Outdoor furniture and other objects like this piece of timber can become destructive missiles. If we can keep our houses together, that will re reduce some of the wind-driven debris out there. But it also goes to pruning our trees and cleaning up our yards, pulling down our pot plants, um, putting things away, putting the pool furniture away, making sure our garden sheds are secure and appropriately tied down. And this PhD project is measuring how loads are transmitted through the entire structure of a house. So we're looking at how the uplift load can get transferred through the, the roofing to the battens, to the, um, the trusses and then to their framing anchors and also through the plasterboard linings and what load that takes. So what goes into building a more cyclone resilient home? So in its modern construction for cyclonic regions, there's a lot of uh, mechanisms that go in to basically hold our roof down in the ground. Like in this tie wall here, or if you can say like a load bearing wall, instead of it trying to hold, hold the roof up, we've actually got it tying it down in the ground level. So the trusses are having all that uplift across the top cord of this wall, and that's all tied down through these steel rods down into the ground, down to the foundation. Very robust. But Northern Australia has more than 100,000 homes built well before cyclone building regulations. David Henderson says the answer for them is relatively simple modifications that will make them more cyclone resistant. Those houses are still quite robust, we just need to improve a few details on them. Recommended improvements include screens or shutters for windows, drop bolts for doors and bracing for older roller doors. On the roof, steel strapping around rafter connections, correctly spaced battens and correctly screwed sheeting are the key elements. We're bringing it up closer to our contemporary housing standards. We have now a more robust structure to be in. You'd feel a lot more comfortable in this house than you would pre this work. Definitely. Yeah, definitely. It's safety, peace of mind. Applied to all older homes in the north, these mitigation measures would not only save millions in a cyclone, they would also help keep people safe. Cyclones, we get told to leave our engineered structures, our office buildings, schools, hospitals, whatever else, and we get told to go home. Our houses have to be up to the task of sheltering us.